going to put a charge on my battery. All right, I'm taking that cabinet out, move it over, probably replace the floor under it. Sure, it's crap. Repair the wall in the back. We're going to go right to the top of the cabinet and run some framing. We're going to have to frame it in. Let's see, we got our HVAC closet ready. HVAC man will put a hole wherever he wants it. We've got our hot water heater pipes ready. Everything, power, water. <coughs> power from the top right there. We'll plug into the top. Uh, got the closet all framed in and refloored. Hallways done. Bedrooms done. This is going to get carpeting pulled back and just carpet stripped on the outside edge, tacked on this side, transition strip there. Some shoe molding will go down here once the linoleum is laid. Oh, I'm red, red. Battery's dead. We got our floor flange here. This wall's coming out. We got this to go to, this piece of trim is all we really have to go to. So when we cut that out, it could be a pain in the ass trying to trim this thing back out. You can see how they had to cut around that thing. So we'll have to do some nice fancy stuff, whatever. Figure that out. Get it all framed in. You can tell the wall's been bad. I mean, the toilet paper roll just fell off the wall because of its bad shape and dying. And we're going to go ahead and take that wall up the same. Just come all the way around. and um, a, We'll find a height where the stuff's in good shape. And go from there. There we go. Was that plywood there already? That's strange. So I took the cabinet out so we can repair the wall behind it. <coughs> or make sure the floor is in good shape. We're going to put that back. But before we do, we're going to cut this wall out wherever it has to be cut out so we can frame. Put our framing back here to accept our new, new wood where it's going to run. So it'll be a little bit of a pain in the butt. We got some, just kind of doing all these seams. Doing all the seams here. Making sure that there everything's kind of level when we put this floor down. You don't want to be able to see the lines. Although we do have some ultra thick um, pad here. This is really thick, thick stuff. Heavy duty. You can roll that stuff up in a ball and let it go back out, and it will still look the same. Unlike some. It's alright. Can be painted. All right, we'll use the other one. All right, so we got the wall cut out, and thank God they ran a two-by-four on the side here in the flat. We just got to put some framing for here and some framing for here because when this house was built, that wall was built all the way down and all the way through the bedroom. <coughs> As you can see, it's behind the wall right there. So the sheetrock goes in there, and then they build a wall right over the top of that. So there's no framing, and they do that so they don't have to do all this T-framing and stuff like that. So anyway, um, we're going to put some here, put some there, put a piece of 3 8 sheetrock up, and um, put a piece of trim around the top, make it look decent, and then let them paint it. That's kind of the cheapest way to get out of this problem that they have here. Is almost dead again okay so we've got the floor down we got all the seams taken care of swept vacuumed and cleaned now we're getting ready to start the linoleum all right so next step we're going to take that we're going to roll it out 
Over here. And start cutting it. We're hoping to come back only four feet in here and stop it right here. But we realized we had problems here. And there wasn't much sense in trying to do a small repair here and not just go ahead and take it squared off. So we squared it off. Came back and the bathroom seemed to be okay here. Um, so we didn't find anything, but the homeowner said, well, let's just go ahead and do the bathroom floor. So we started tearing it out and thank God we did because that was all rotted, as you've probably seen in the earlier part of the video. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> we had a soft spot right here due to this toilet. So we went back a couple feet, two and a half feet or whatever that is right there. And that's where we're at. And now we got a big red line pop down through here for the linoleum. Probably could have used a blue line, but we used a red one for some reason. And anyways, um, here we go. We've got the linoleum out in the driveway, spreading it out. And uh, that red line is for our measurement. So I'm going to try to make a video on how to install this stuff. Oh, yes. And we go. So we got this big old piece, 24 foot long. Pop your line, roll it out, how's it going Mr. Chris? I think I brought a six inch one the other day, is that the one? It was too small. Use it as a baby. Baby. Cool. Got enough glue? I hope so. Let me go get more. I got one other jug. Yeah, I know. Use that one. Yeah, you can get started. <laughs> oh, you need more. You ain't got enough glue. Definitely gonna need more glue, Bob. Boss, he's only got a gallon left, that's all he's got is that, need more glue, you should make a spray gun, you can spray it down and go, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah.
Good numbers, Chris. Good numbers. Good, look at that. Closet drop. I know what I left in the truck, my telephone. Nice. Because we only got 24 feet. The closet piece is going to have to be turned this way. I mean, excuse me, the bathroom piece. <coughs> so our lines are going to be going this way now. And on the bathroom, they're going to be going that way because the drop that we have left off is that is section right there. It's on the porch railing now. Oh, wait a minute. There it is. Right. Looking good. Looking good. Going into the refrigerator. So what we did was, the main thing we did, this is the most important part, was that line that we popped from one end to the other, squaring up the room. After we got the room squared up, we took a piece of paper and wrote down our numbers. And what we did was, we started from the outside wall where we're at, and we put a pencil line. We'll go from there to there and measure. Measure. From there to there, measure, measure, continue that line out, and then measure everything from that line back to the cabinets, back to the wall, back to the wall, back to the, this wall, this wall, inside the closet. Um, so you measure from that line, everything is measured on that side to the line, and everything else is measured from that line to the walls and you always leave yourself extra and make your cuts as close to the corners as you can get them so that when you go in your door do your drops for the transitions cut your corners real nice and tight like that nice and close then you'll come back and trim it up trim it up all the way around this is the most important part is putting your cuts right here at the edge <coughs> always want your I mean you wouldn't want your cut over here and you wouldn't want it over here somewhere so you want to definitely always have your cuts in the right spot and that's done by measuring rolling it out fitting it pulling it back folding it back in half marking it cutting it it's this is technique so I'm not saying that putting linoleum in um, by yourself for your first time is going to be an easy chore something you want to have a little bit of experience doing before you actually go and do one on your own so maybe learn from somebody else and that is why I have Chris here with me Chris is an experienced linoleum guy I'm not but I have guys that work for me that do all types of different stuff <coughs> Paul's a good handy electrician He's worked for an electrician in the past and he does good good work like that and he's also just kind of an all-around handyman good at a lot of things great at none i'm just kidding paul's a good guy anyway we got chris out here he does linoleum laminate hardwood tile so you want to pick your crew that you have anyways when you're picking a crew you always want to pick crew that somebody can do a little bit of everything and that's what makes a crew great because everybody learns off the other guy I could do this I've seen Chris do it enough times but I'm gonna keep letting Chris do it as long as he's here and then when I have to I'll do it myself <coughs> I've been doing this for oh let me see I'm 57 58 years old I've been doing this since I was 15, just carpentry work, tearing things out, putting them back. So, I've, I've seen my share of about everything. It's looking really sweet. Man, Chris. When you're cutting this stuff is when you want to be minding your P's and Q's. Because you don't want to cut it short. Definitely don't want to ever cut it too short. The only thing that's going to cover up the edges 
is a piece of we got quarter round right Chris yeah. quarter round so that's all you have and when you're putting linoleum in a house it'd be nice if you didn't have any of the trims on you didn't have to worry about them but since you do you have to take really take your time make nice easy cuts so that everything looks tight at least as tight as you can get it everything is not going to be perfect We'll get it as close as we can, by God. Chris, this is Annie's first rodeo. Done this before. See, what he's doing there is just cutting everything close. He's not cutting all the way down to the bottom. He's cutting up a little bit so that that little piece can be stuck up underneath the trim. What he's doing, he's pushing that down and under. Yeah, you don't ever want that stuff to come out if you can help it. And it's hard to do on a place that's already been trimmed out and everything. So, Let's see if you can see this cutting linoleum for a doorway. not trying to cut all the way to the ground he's cutting up an eighth of an inch or so so that that little piece that he leaves on there can be tucked up under the door okay, that's going to get tucked see that little white piece watch he's going to make that disappear before it's over with these are the time of consuming steps that somebody that knows what they're doing will do. See that disappearing? This is what, as opposed to somebody that is not real good at this, they will leave that away from, and you'll be able to see the gaps. You'll be able to see the gaps down there, and that's just not what you want. That's what an unexperienced guy would do. Chris is going to make it look like they put the doorways in after he did the floor. Yes, that's the way you do it. See how he's tucking that? And before he did that, he cut that up. Now, just so you know, what was this kind of saw you use? Uh, Multi-tool. Multi-tool. Yeah. Cut, cut the jams up, right? Yeah. Same as you do for tile. Or Same things you do for tile, right? Or anything else. See, this is the jam right here. And what he had to do is get it up off the floor. So you had some room to tuck it under that. So you take your jam saw or multi-tool, whatever you happen to have. And uh, go the thickness of whatever you're going to have down here and cut above that so you can tuck this under. And this is the, the slow part. You know when you're cutting around doorways in a small area. But this is nobody said it was he was going to get in there and just knock it out. It's going to take you a little time if you're going to get it done right. Look at this. It looks like the door was trimmed out after the fact. Everything is tucked, tucked, tucked. You can't see like from here to here. You can't see that spot uh, wide open. Some people will leave it to you. If you look at your doorway or some of your doorways, you look down, you'll see a gap right there. If they did the floor after the fact. No, it's been recording for 420 now, matter of fact. 420 mark. Yeah, man. Nice stuff. If you're gonna get if you're gonna buy linoleum for your house, um, buy this better stuff that's kind of basically got padding on it pretty thick stuff do they have a name for this stuff chris uh I'm not sure type of uh is. type of linoleum it is it's really super thick though as you can see i mean that's a three sixteenths of an inch thick you get the real thin cheap stuff it's going to be even harder to uh, install it and the reason being you can't fold that real thin stuff it's very difficult to fold Once you fold it, you put a crease in it, and that crease is going to be there forever. 
So it's recording now. I like this stuff here. You can twist it all up. Glue Pencil that down. It. She's Pencil beautiful. Pull it right back out, and it doesn't mess it up yeah, at great. all. Yeah. So that's a good. That's a good thing about this stuff. If you're going to be messing with this stuff, believe me, you take a piece of it and fold it like that right there. Any other piece, and what you're going to see is a crease right there instead of it popping back like this does. Spend a little bit of extra money. Get the good stuff. And the other good thing is once you get past the doorway and get all that tucked, if you get a little bit shy right here, that's not a big deal. They're getting quarter round going all the way around here. So they'll be a stick a quarter round from there in there. They'll be quarter round from here to there, there, to there. We just keep going around the quarter round for places like this. The doorways, though, you want to have just like these, and they're about perfect. A little bit of glue coming out, that's about it, but this is nice. That's what you want. And then the stove goes here, no worries. We had to replace some back, some back there. Um, and then under here, we'll throw a piece of cord around all the way underneath that cabinet and just keep going around. Transitions here, keep going around. I mean, once you get your line going down through the middle of the floor, if you know anything about carpentry work, the rest is, uh, isn't terrible. You kept holding all your measurements from that one line, both sides. You mark that out on your paper, real nice. Bring that outside and roll that stuff out and just draw what you just did. Leave it a little bit extra, you know, for the folds. Up, up the wall so you can get nice and tight except for the starting at leading edge quarter round Beautiful. Both little guys. Like I say, most important, notice when he cuts that, he holds his blade on the side and cuts it up so he can tuck all that under. That's, that's what makes it look good. Right, Chris? Yep. That's the, that's the part that looks good. And then we're quarter rounding this all the way around. Right, Chris, let me get out of your way. He's pushing that down nice and tight because you want to fold it in there as far as you can. If you cut down that line and it's not tight, you'll end up you'll end up cutting out into your floor on your linoleum. When you push it down, you, you're not going to have enough linoleum left. So, um, really, a real nice tool is a three-inch chisel. You can slide in there, or if you know you're keeping it in tight, because that's where you can get out. Correct, Chris? Yeah. yeah. The good thing is you're putting quarter round down there, but the, the other thing is you don't want to have something coming out three quarters of an inch because quarter round isn't that wide.
he's gone. Oh, get us connected at the corner. I did. Damn it. Make Chris work. What'd you do? I didn't do it. Wasn't me. Chris, like, you better not mess up my linoleum. Now what? What's that, buddy? Seems like it. Should be okay, I think. Can't hurt it. You can't hurt it. You need fingers over there? Not very wide. You got like from uh, you got that's more like.